All right, Shalom. This is the brother Mayum coming at you from GMS Tampa Bay. <clears throat> First and foremost, I want to give all the praises and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash. Double honors to the elders, apostles, our great millstone, and much and a and a single citations to the Akim, uh, who are diligently pushing out this truth, and Shalom to the Akwathium out there who are listening in quietness and meekness. All right, so. Just going off uh, the Apostle Tahar video, um, can't remember the name of the video, uh, the latest, one of the latest ones he did, uh, but he went into this uh, website here entitled betterthancash.org, uh, he may mention uh, for we can, you know, check up on it and read up on it here, um, and there's a few things that I want to read, I went into one of these reports, this one right here where it says cash, this is a, this is a, this is a lot, cash, digital digitization digitization un collaboration coordination and harmonization opportunities <clears throat> um so but before i get into that article i want to make a couple points here on this main page all right and as you can see here on the top it says better than cash alliance all right and the, you, we all know what this is getting getting geared towards all right to push out that rfid microchip all right Hey, Kahala, Yahweh, 1144. Um, but, um, you know, we know what this is getting geared towards, which is the RFID microchip. And if you don't know what the RFID microchip and what it is, um, I suggest you just start getting up on game, man, because uh, this thing is getting pushed out. There's already society, uh, countries such as Sweden, uh, I believe Taiwan is one of them as well. Um, China is getting close, is moving more uh, closer every day to a cashless society. All right, Sweden already is a cashless society. Taiwan is a cashless society. I believe it's Bangkok. Um, but uh, this is what, this is being pushed around the world. And as you can see here with the, this lady, she looks like she's from a, a third world Asian country. All right. Um, but what it says across the screen there, it says moving from cash to digital payments to improve people's lives and you see this is why they're trying to push this rfid microchip which is the mark of the beast all right as a convenience um thing okay it'll improve your life all right but here i'm gonna hit a couple points it says we advocate it says we promote the tr transition from cash to digital payments in a way that improves lives and expands responsible digital financial services hold on real quick Akiyam. All right, so lock you. <clears throat> All right, but it says, let me read that again. It says, we promote the transition from cash to digital payments in a way that improves lives and expands responsible digital financial services. All right, and again, you can see how they're trying to make this push to digital payments. All right, which where now they have um, the majority of the people when they hear of digital payments, they think of... Uh, um, Touch payments for, such as from your phone uh, or a uh, Apple Watch or some type of Fitbit watch. You know, something where it's digital where you don't have to use cash, paper cash. Okay. But it says, we promote the transition from cash to digital payments in a way that improves lives and expands responsible digital financial services. So you see, they're making it seem like it's responsible to do it, to do digital payments. Which is what the RFID microchip is is is, is um runoff of digital payments, okay. Uh, but as we're gonna read in the um in the report, all right. Well, we'll get to that here in a second. But let me just cut capital, or let me hit on a couple of these points. It says we research. It says we conduct research, share their experiences of our members, and develop tools to help the transition to digital payments. So you see. 
there the, you can see how the, everything is getting geared to cashless society all right and it, the the front runner of this the front running device the front running tools that they're going to be using is that RFID microchip which is going to be pushed here very soon okay it's already being pushed on a on a on a smaller scale but it's getting ready to be, get pushed globally which is what we're going to read all right well uh, last point before i get to the article it says we catalyze we help our members as they work towards the goal of building economies where people governments and businesses can make and receive digital payments so you see everything everybody's going to be connected with this everybody's going to be connected with this this form of digital payments which going to come via the rfid microchip which is the mark of the beast and as you can see it says building economies where people governments and businesses so everyone everybody is going to be tied together everybody's going to be tied together so let me get to this article and as you can see it's a pretty lengthy article about 64 pages long but there's a point that i want to read up on all right and it's going to be on page 11. Uh, brothers can read this. It's in that it's in that main page. You can get it and then get to this article. Um, but I want to get to the point here. Um, uh, where is it? Um, like I said, it's a pretty good article. I didn't read the entire 64 pages, but I want to make a couple points here. Right. And I want to get to this point here where it says digit digitization and cash. All right, and I want to read a little bit of this and touch on a few things that they say here. All right, as you can see, it's a little bit of little bit of reading, but we'll get through it. All right, so it says the high penetration rate of mobile devices in developing countries and the steady stream of innovation of, in payments both have a fundamental impact on cash transfers and related core collaboration and coordination. All right, so. It says the first trend relates to financial inclusion. Now, when you go to financial inclusion, let's get a uh, let's get what that is real quick. All right, and this is uh, what financial inclusion means for anybody who doesn't know. It says financial inclusion is where individuals and businesses have access to useful and affordable financial products and services that meet their needs that are delivered in a responsible and sustainable way. Financial inclusion is defined as the availability and equality of opportunities to access financial services. All right. So, again, you can see how this is geared towards that RFID microchip. Everyone's going to have everybody. You're going to have that availability and the equality because everyone's going to have it. everyone's going to be on that same level. Why? Because they're all going to be servants under ESA. All right. Which which is what it means to get the mark. All right. A mark. All right. Karagma and the Greek. All right, and then you, you, everyone knows the scripture, Revelation 13, 16 on down, okay? That mark in verse 16 is karagma in the Greek, and it means a stamp, a badge of servitude, all right? So here it is, you're going to have, everyone's going to be on that same level, and they're going to have those opportunities to, to access financial services as, as going to whatever you want to go to, anything that you want to spend some cash on, you're going to have to have this RFID microchip. OK, let's get back to this. It says the first trend relates to financial inclusion. Two thirds of unbanked adults have a mobile phone and the demand for mobile phone technology continues to rise. 17.1 billion mobile phone subscriptions are projected for 2030, which, you know, Esau really, you know, he believes that he's going to continue to go on forever and ever. That, that's just that's just the pride of these devils. All right, but let's get to a couple points here. It says, as technology becomes more widely available, mobile payment systems gain recognition as a cheaper, easier, and more efficient alternative to traditional payment systems. And as we'll read here in a little bit, you'll see that it you don't have to charge so many fees or you won't have to charge or pay um, to be able to do those, those cash-based transactions and things like that. So it's a cheaper way to uh and easier because what you can just swipe your hand on a meter all right because here they're trying to disguise it as mobile payments such as you know using your cell phone you know they're what they're trying to disguise it you know they're trying to use those those terms mobile payment to get people to believe that this is talking about using cell phones because 
what Esau is trying to do, where it says the first trend relates to financial inclusion. Remember, that means that everybody that had that availability for everyone to. And this is why they're being they're trying to push everyone to they're going to push this RFID microchip so everyone ha can have financial inclusion, so to speak. You know, they're going to put everybody under this. This is why it's going to be made mandatory uh, at th across the whole world, not just America. It's going to be pushed around the whole world. All right. And again, it's going to be pushed out as a cheaper, easier and more efficient alternative tra to traditional payment systems. So you see that this is what their this is the, what their agenda is, is geared towards They're making the, they have to make this RFID microchip appeasable to the people so that they want to get it, because according to Revelation for uh, chapter 14, and let me get that. Let's go ahead and get it. All right, let's read what Revelation 14 says. Well, Revelation 14 and 9, and it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and re and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So you see, you're gonna these people are gonna have to receive it. They're not gonna be it can't be forced on them. So Esau is gonna make it to where you peep the, the, the majority of the population of the world is gonna get this RFID microchip because it's gonna be appeasable to them. They're gonna like it. All right. It says, continuing on reading here, uh, where it says this disruption, this disruption has already taken place in certain African and Asian countries, which have surpassed and industrialized nations in their use of mobile mobile financial services. As a result, 800 million people have gained access to financial services since 2011, according to the World Bank Findex database. This still left 1.7 billion unbanked people in 2017, but the trend toward increased financial inclusion remains stable. So you see, they're still trying to push for everyone to become a part of this system. All right. Which is which is that because um, this is that one world order. That's the system that they're trying to push. They're trying to push everyone to be a one world government. That's what they're going to do with this RFID microchip, which is when you go in, when we went into that word financial inclusion, you can see how it bring is bringing everybody together via financial way via the RFID microchip. All right. Let's go to trend number two. It says the second trend relates to innovation in payment instruments. This refers to the development of blockchain-based applications and their integration in functional market exchanges, thus leading to a reduction of bank transfer costs. So you see how they're trying to disguise the RFID microchip under um, a mobile app, a blockchain-based application, you see? Now, all you gotta do is just replace the block blockchain-based application and just put RFID microchip. It says this refers to the let's let's do that let's let's interchange those words. It say let's read it again. This refers to the development. Well, let's read it from the top. The second trend relates to innovation in payment instruments. This refers to the development of RFID microchip technology and their integration in functional market exchanges, thus leading to a reduction of bank transfer cost. So you see. It fits just as perfectly well. So you see how they're disguising it with this mobile mobile payments, digital mobile payments, blockchain based applications. All you got to do is just put the word RFID microchip in there and you see that that's what that's talking about. It says additionally, innovation and in RFID um, microchip payment solutions brings about increased competition in payment services and offers you user-centric alternatives to traditional financial intermediaries okay so you see that they're trying to um it says well let me finish it, it says alternative to traditional financial intermediaries meaning banks money houses or physical cash so you see you get in that rfid microchip you're no longer going to have to go to the bank you're not going to have to have a bank account because there's going to have your rfid microchip is going to hold all that information in there via digital um codes algorithms and you're not going to have to carry no physical cash because it's all going to be on the rfid microchip but you see they're trying to disguise it as a mobile payment or something with a cell phone your cell phone is going to have all your money in it digital money it says while mobile wallets have in the past often been restricted to certain specific mobile network operator 
and interoperability is increasing and additional independent providers are entering the market. Okay, continuing on, it says a number of country level limitations, however, restrain the generalization of these solutions. They include the regulatory framework set by the central bank, including know your customer requirements that limit access to national banks. This maturity of system infrastructure at point of sale is a practical constraint in humanitarian context. Also, literacy and numeracy constraints might limit the ability of the most vulnerable beneficiaries to use digital channels such as, here it goes, to say mobile payments. We're going to change that to RFID payment. Okay. It says, so I lost my place. It says, also, literacy and numeracy constraints might limit the ability of the most vulnerable beneficiaries to use digital channels such as RFID microchip technology or select RFID microchip solution payment solutions. Another limitation specific to, to RFID microchip systems is that they poorly handle. Well, this is talking about the apps. It says another limitation specific to blockchain based systems is that they poorly handle the settlement of large number of transactions due to the complex calculations required when securely adding hashing an additional block of data. The third relevant trend relates to security and authentic authentication, which presents present both opportunities and challenges. On the one hand, the development of digital identity and the consumerization of biometric solutions offer an avenue to fulfill know your customer requirements more effectively, which as we went up to the know your customer policy, that's a central bank policy. That's a framework set by the gov- by the central banks which is run by who the elites the rothschilds the the the, the rockefellers okay you get so on and so on the, the 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 higher up elites okay but it says let's read that again on the one hand the development of digital identity and the consumerization of biometric solutions and what is that what's the biometric what's these digital identity and the consumerization of biometric solutions what is that speaking of the RFID microchip. Not only are you going to have all your identity on there, you're it, it, you're going to be able to use it using your biometrics. Okay, it's on your hand. It says offer an avenue to fulfill the know your customer requirements more effectively based on reliable personal data via mobile devices, which in this case is the RFID microchip. So on the RFID microchip, these the the central banks are going to know who you are they're going to know how much money you have they're going to know where you're at because it, it, that's what the RFID uh technology is used as a digital identity is that not what they use it for nowadays they put it they put RFID tags to know what a pro, what a product is they have the UPC codes they know what the product is they know how much it weighs they know uh what how much the uh the volume the content holds they know where when it arrived into a store, when it left the store. It's the same thing that's going to be used for the RFID microchip that's going to be implanted into people to do the exact same thing, except it's going to hold more data. Who you are, how much money you have, your social security number, your medical information, all that is going to be on this RFID microchip. Okay, but let's keep reading. And here it says, this supports the secure authorization of payments, thereby enhancing control compliance and accountability so you see thereby enhancing control compliance and accountability so they're gonna this is this is the rfid microchip technology being pushed it says on the other hand if not adequately secured and this is risk that esau always talks about with the rfid microchip this is how you know if you if you know anything about the rfid microchip you can read this and see that this is what it's talking about It says, on the other hand, if not adequately secured, the exposure could increase threats such as identity theft, breach of privacy, and hacking of financial transactions. And now you see, this is why they're going to push that RFID microchip, because if you have a cell phone, anybody can steal your cell phone if they have your password or your fingerprint or whatnot, or some type of uh, data reader, and they can get the information from your phone. Now, with the RFID microchip, that's going to be a little bit harder, but still... Even with the RFID microchip, you have Edomites out there who, who have come out and said that these are a risk of having an RFID microchip. People can steal your identity via um, card readers or identification uh, 
RFID readers. You know, people walk by you and they get your information. It says, and hacking of financial transactions. So you see, they'll be able to just steal your identity. But this, are, this is how you know this is talking about the RFID microchip because this is the same concerns that Esau has had with other articles that we've read in the past on the RFID technology. Okay? But it says, the International Committee of the Red Cross Handbook on Data Protection provides a good illustration of these risks and actions that need to be considered. All right? So you see how... Now, I want to do make one point because... Now, that's going to be everything I read on this article. I just wanted to show you that how they, this is what they're trying to push around the world. With, okay. But I want to show you something of who's all involved with this or what this, this article is saying is, um, right here it is. The name of the, 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 um, the article, it says what a UN collaboration. What's the UN? Let's, let's look up the UN. Who's the UN? Let's see. The United Nations is an inter intergovernmental organization that was tasked to maintain international peace and security. Okay, if you don't know who the hell the United the UN is, you're a damn buffoon, man. All right, you're a buffoon, man. The United Nations, man. The UN. You hear about it all the time. All right, look it up if you don't know who the UN is. All right. This is who it's involved. Who who's involved in pushing this RFID microchips, man? This is uh, this is going to be pushed around the whole entire planet Earth. And if you get this RFID microchip, let's read that and we'll close out on it. Revelation fourteen and nine. If you get this RFID microchip in lieu of convenience and lieu of more secure, um, a more of a secure feeling of yourself. Then you're gonna get put to death. This is this is what the Bible says. Revelation fourteen and nine. And a third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever." And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, or, and whosoever receiveth the mark on, of his name. All right? So that's what's going to happen to you if you get this RFID market here, man. It's getting, ready, it's getting pushed out there. All right? They're making it very known out there for you people. You just, you people are, are ignorant and you don't, know, you don't know anything. You don't want to know anything because you just want to sit like a hermit crab and your little, uh, your little, uh, what's it called? Your little bubble that you, you've been living in, man. All right. So just going through this one last time. All right. If anything else pops up here, I'll bring that out real quick before we close. But if not, we'll just go. Either way, brothers can read up on this article. Um, I'll try to remember to put the link in the description box. Uh, but with that, Lord willing, your brothers were edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rachakwadash. Until next time, I say Shalom.